I'm Carl Schlierman, and I am a Solutions Consultant with Beyond 20. This video will cover a little bit about what generating an email in ShareWell can provide you, uh, and demonstrating some of the capabilities that you have in doing so. For this example, we'll go ahead and we'll open up a uh, new blueprint. And I've already created a one step that I wanted to show you as a, a demonstration piece. And so we can go into our one step manager and I have a one step underneath incident, underneath the no notification email. And I'm going to open up and edit this one step. And it's a very simple one step um, where all that we're doing is just sending an email to our customer. Um, one quick note that I, I want to put uh, out to begin with is that a part of a, a customization that you can do to a one step, and you may have seen that on the previous screen, is that all these icons are in the form of a, a letter, you know, an email. And so very simple to add that. Not too many people uh, know that, but it's listed here underneath our options and uh, you can simply open up the option and you can set a custom image to any graphic that you want and so this is just one of the out-of-the-box graphics for an email and I just wanted to grab that and yeah it's a visual graphic that just lets you know that this is some type of email so let's uh, take a look at our our email step and uh, from here underneath common actions, uh, send an email, all I did was click and drag uh, a new email over and then from this point I can go on and begin customizing it. So uh, this is our email uh, template that we have to work with and so down here is your body of your email and if you scroll up you can see uh, uh, toolbars and some different fields that you can adjust. And uh, some of those fields are really important to make a, a mental note of uh, as they can come in handy from time to time. For example, this little button here with these little cog wheels. Let the user edit an email before sending. Essentially by checking this option, instead of ShareWell just automatically sending that email to whoever you specify in, in your email, it will pop open that email on the screen and it'll allow your user who is in the ShareWell client to go in there and be able to change things or add things, customize that email. Uh, so for the, the purpose of this demonstration, we're gonna go ahead and leave that um, selected so that we can demonstrate you know, what it looks like to have an email pop up and, and be able to add additional information. Another uh, really important piece of, of configuring this email is to make sure that you are sending this email using the default user account. So in this demo system, I already have my email all set up, ready to go, and it's set as that default user account. And so that's very important to have it set that way. If, for instance, you had it still selected on the default placeholder, I'll guarantee that email will not work. <laughs> so it's very important that you have your email set up and have the default set. All right, now that we have our default user account set as the account that we want to be able to send this email, let's go ahead and take a look at the custom expression I here, have here in our to field. This is a standard custom expression that you'll see all throughout ShareWell's out of the box where we simply are looking at a stored value of current system and saying that if it equals dev, we want it to use the values, the email addresses in our other stored value, uh, dev email recipients. This is a way so that if your system is currently in a development state, you can prevent 
any email from accidentally going out to live customers if you have those already imported into your system. So this is always a good practice to do in any email that you are creating in your system, whether you're on test or production, is to use this case statement. So um, we have that sent to our stored value for our dev environment. Otherwise, we're actually going to use the email value for our customer. So to find that value for our customer email, you can go and browse down your value into the customer field and simply find the email. And so that'll populate our customer email value. And we can click on OK, store that custom expression. Now we can go and by hitting this drop down, we're allow allowing ourselves to add additional fields to this particular email. And so for this example, I want to add the, the CC field. So in the CC field for this email, I also want to add, well, let's add myself as a customer uh, on this email so that not only can I email my customer directly, but I can get a copy of this email. Uh, maybe I want to keep it for reference. So in order to do that, we can go ahead and right click in our CC section and it brings up our uh, list of all the different objects that are available to us. And what we're looking for in this case is under the system function section. If we expand this, we have a bunch of current user values. And so right here we have a current user email value. And what that does is that it uses a, a, a system variable, whoever is the logged in person, myself, and it will go ahead and pull my email address from my user profile within ShareWell and it'll populate my email address into this CC field. Um, and then also we can go ahead and uh, put in a subject line, whatever you want to include there. And then down here, we have the body of our email. And so I have a very simple example, uh, dear customer, uh, thank you for submitting, etc., etc. And then we have this section here, which is open, uh, and, and we can add something. So let's say that I want to add a table into this email. So we can potentially add additional fields and, and provide it into some structure with rows and columns. In order to do that, you need to switch the view uh, of this body. And you can do that by clicking on this icon here, this magnifying glass on the upper right hand side of the screen. And what this does is that it takes us into a, a more detailed granular view of the body of that email. And you may also notice now we have this new uh, toolbar on top that has different menu options. And so we can easily uh, add pictures if we want. Uh, oh, look at this. We can insert a table. So we'll go ahead and select insert table. And eh, let's see, three rows, two columns. That sounds good. Now let's take a look at what that looks like. So here we go. We have our three rows, two columns, and now we have a structured table in the body of our email. Using the same rules for, for constructing uh, an email in ShareWell, we have the capability of right-clicking, and it'll bring up our menu of all the different business objects and relationships that are associated to this incident. And now we can go ahead and populate additional fields into the body of this email that we want. And so for this example, let's just go ahead and, and uh, we, can, we can grab, let's say, the owned by team, the team that owns the ticket. and well, let's go ahead and grab the own by name. Those are just people, you know, that are associated to this ticket. And we can easily go in and, and type in a label of some kind. And so now we have two fields and we can continue to format it however you want. You know, whatever looks best to you. It's always a... Uh, uh, a personal preference option. But so here we have our two fields that we want. 
And once again, we're using that system variable for the current user display name, my name, and we're going to populate my email address into the body of this email. So we got everything all set up the way I wanted it to, our font, font size, whether you want objects, you know, or uh, characters bold, underline, you can put in hyperlinks, you can do many different things in, in this form using this, this header and doing your inserts and so forth. So we'll go ahead and click OK. We'll click OK on the one step to save it. We're going to close out the one step manager. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to publish that one step. And I'm going to use same blueprint that I've been using to build out this demo. So now we're going to go through the publish process. It'll take a, a, a few seconds. Okay, we are uh, now published and, and the scan was successful. It's going to finish doing the publication process in our admin client. And now we're going to go over to our rich client we're going to go ahead and reload definitions so that we get all those changes that we just made to our one step. And when the system comes up, we're going to go ahead and just find any incident that already exists in the out of the box system. We're going to pull that up. And what I did is I already added my one step to the task pane over here. And so if I click on this link, it's going to launch that one step. And here you go. So in this one step, we have our values populated for the from. That's our, our system account uh, that uh, stores that variable, and we haven't changed that. Uh, and then, of course, you're bringing in uh, the uh, email that was in the stored value for dev recipient. And then we're also bringing in that that current user email address. And so we go ahead and in the email we populate the customer name, so that's Tracy. And as you can see, that we have an owned by team listed here for second level support. And so that was populated. But then our owned by, we didn't have an individual selected, and that's why it's still blank. And finally, our closing, it brings in my name as I'm the person launching this email and then it brings in my email address if i was to log in as a different person it would bring in their information so whoever clicks this link to launch the one step their current user information will get populated into these fields and that's it you know th these email are are highly capable and customizable to put whatever information you want in them and this is just a, a real quick, brief demonstration of some of those possibilities of adding a table and bringing in those current user values and uh, putting expressions to determine who you want in the to field. So thank you very much for your time. And uh, it, was, it was a pleasure showing you this information. And as always, please check out Beyond 20 on YouTube.com. We have plenty more videos to show you. Thanks.